G'day guys, welcome to this week's Life on the Hull. So uh, last week, you'll recall, I had that really worrying night where I thought my little yacht was going to sink. So I did a 5 a.m. shuffle down to it, made sure those scupper plugs had been pulled out. Had a lot of advice from you guys, really appreciated about little flaps on the back and you know how all of you have had worrying nights in your boats. Well, it didn't stop there. I went away for five days, went up to my mum's to do some work and uh, I'm five hours away to get a call from the waterways inspector. He noticed the bow of my boat's actually really far down it's obviously taken on some water um, we had about a one and a half to two meter high flood go through the river and I think my mooring lines might have been just a tad too tight pulled the nose down all the rains come into the cockpit and on the back seats and then float up over the washboard and into the boat so guess where I am back on the bloody boat when I should be building my boat I'm down here fixing this so I'm gonna actually get in there hopefully my motor that I leave stored locked up inside and with a chain around it is probably sitting in about 10 inches of fresh water so I'm praying that it's gonna start because I've got no other way to get it back onto the trailer but this is the advantage of owning a trailer so I'll just wind the keel up pull it onto a trailer pull it out I can go and do any repair work any restorative work I need to do without having to engage a shipyard and I'm pretty bloody happy about that it's only a little fella only six meters so it's pretty much manageable on my own. But anyway, here we go. I'm about to get to it and I'm going to open it up and see what the carnage is. I expect to still have six or eight inches of water inside the boat. So I'm going to have to pump that out first. Then I'm going to motor it up to our home up the road here where we've got a boat ramp about 100 metres down the road. I'm going to pull him out, take it up to the factory and leave it there because I'm heading to Queensland if I can get in. As long as the borders stay open, I'm going to drive up to Queensland in two days and we've hired a Sea Wind 1260 for 10 nights uh, up in the Whitsunday Island. So really Really excited about that. I'm hanging. I've got a good old friend of mine who used to work on the Clipper series or works and, and has done the Clipper series a couple of times and he now works for Clipper and uh, we're gonna take a sea wind out for a couple of weeks and, and have a ball. So expect a bit of a bit of video on that as well. So here we go, we're gonna go and see what the damage is. Yep, I think this is the culprit here. See down in here, this area here, uh, because the boat's been pulled down nose heavy and we had, I'm not joking, 12 inches of rain in 10 hours. It was absolutely horrendous, 140 kilometer an hour winds. And this river probably rose a meter and a half, probably at least a meter and a half. So that's held my boat. It's sort of floated up to the point where it couldn't go any further. It's gone, Whoa! rain's hit that. And it's gone in under the washboard probably just enough over the period of the day to absolutely inundate inside. So I'm gonna open it up and have a look. I'm gonna open this, I do not want to look. Oh, yep. Look at the water down in there. And of course my little motor's sitting in it as well. So yeah, a bit of pumping to do, but hopefully the motor has, the motor's high and dry up to about a foot and a half. So I'm really praying that that hasn't gone under, but at least it's fresh water, I know that much. Yeah, have a look at this shitty little lip here. I and mean, this is the problem, the water's gone over the top and into the cabin. Um, I've got a fair bit of water down in there. I've just got the motor out. I've got probably about four or five inches of water in here. Right, check this out. <laughs> Cheap cupboard's full. Uh, yuck. I mean, this all stems back to the other night. And uh, it's funny how things just uh, are cumulative. A uh, little thing can lead to a lot, and you know, you just have to have a flood and uh, a little bit of a lack of attention. So, learn from it, boys. I'm going to be pumping. Luckily, I do have an onboard manual build, but uh, rest assured, I'll probably be fitting a, an electric build with a solar panel. I've actually got the electrics here, but they're all been rooted since the day I bought it. So, I never really worried about too much. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to start pumping get all this water out of here and uh, hopefully I can get the motor started but first things first I'll get the get the water out of here first okay the mast is down that uh, it's pretty easy on this boat to get the mast down to be honest but yeah I just came across something really unusual up here in the uh, the mast head right in the top here where all my halyards run I found a couple of fish jammed in there so that indicates to me that there's an eagle or some type of uh, probably an osprey or something that's saving some munchies for later and uh, yeah in a safe place but yeah that's really funny it must be sitting up there probably crapping on my boat there's no bird poop on the boat so that's actually quite unusual but you know I'd rather be out here rescuing my boat than, uh, than laminating oh did I say laminating I have a little bit of that to do let's get into it eh
I'm going to kick off this week with our large dual companion way. This dual companion way has been in and out of the hull uh, mould around about, oh, God knows, 100 times. But uh, what I need to do is reinforce it with foam core and, and then lay uh, up to three layers of glass over the foam in any area that I believe that needs reinforcing. Now, under the stair treads is a very, very important part of this uh, module because that's what's going to eliminate stress cracking and the like. And, uh, and we certainly got into that and uh, and basically this whole video is going to concentrate on how I reinforce this particular module and uh, and the the work that's involved there So these foam core um, panels that I'm making here for the stair treads need to be cut on a 45 degree angle. So you can see me here, I'm just making a mark around the outside here. Uh, yeah, a lot of the time I actually wrote, drew uh, the uh, the mark on the wrong side of the panel. So it's very important to get the right side when you cut it. It's so easy to miter something the wrong way, and I think everybody's done it at some point. But by cutting the bevel on my bands, or I just set it at 45 degrees, and off I went. And it's a really easy way to cut foam as a band, or I find you get a nice smooth cut. It's pretty simple, uh, using it almost like a scroll saw. But you know, at the end of the day, you're only cutting foam. You can see here, I've actually... Uh, realize that I've cut it on the wrong side so I've turned it over and uh, and cut the correct side there's nothing worse than throwing away really expensive foam Got to glue these uh, foam stair tread um, supports in. Now I need to use some sea light to put that in. The problem with this is it's about a year old. Um, I'm going to give it a go. I reckon I can rejuvenate it. The thing with sea light is it's basically polyester resin and uh, Q cell mixture, and it's quite light. So if I can incorporate it correctly, then I should be able to rejuvenate it. Typically, resins don't have good shelf life. However, this has been sealed with a with a ring and uh, you know it's never been open but I, I guarantee that this is not going to be a good uh, a good start so I'm going to have to get my drill mixer in here and give it a good go. It actually feels quite good but it's very dry so that means all the resin is sunk and the thick citrope and everything has actually sunk to the bottom so we need to reincorporate that and the only way to do that is with a good mix and, uh, and using a drill mixer. Don't try to do it by hand, you're wasting your time. You're never gonna get that incorporated back into solution. Um, I'm gonna give it a crack and see if I can bring it back. If I can't, I might have to buy some more.
Right, now I've got to be mindful here. This step intersects with my bridge deck and basically I need to make sure that I put it far enough away to allow for the slope of the bridge deck. If I put it too far up here, it's going to actually hit the bridge deck and lift this module up. So this one goes all the way down here like this. masking tape and then some probably some broomsticks of We're freezing here. It's so cold today. It's uh, about four degrees here this morning. So, yeah, I'm feeling it. Still got the shorts on though. Never wear pants. I hate wearing trousers. Um, right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to reinforce the foam steps that are now in place on that dual companionway that I have up there, that big module on the deck there. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a layer of 300, another layer of 600, and then another layer of 300 over the top. So I need two lots of each of these. Now, more importantly, I need to increase the size of this so that it wraps over. Now, if this is one of the stair treats, I need to make sure that I actually wrap it right over and leave about a 50 millimeter um, apron or skirt over the top so that it engages into the part of the stair riser. And that's reinforcing. I'm gonna do that with all three layers. And then I'm gonna to start to strip reinforce all the areas that I feel that are gonna need it, particularly uh, the uprights that are going to retain the strength and then be engaged into the foam cabinetry that's gonna form part of that road. So there's a lot to do. Uh, right now I'm just gonna basically cut the cloth, go up there and then think about getting to work. I have tried to keep these modules as light as possible. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was watching a Balanced Catamarans video talking about foam core technology that's being used in uh, Balanced Catamarans. And Phil Berman, who's uh, you know incredibly experienced catamaran sailor and now uh, the director of uh, Balanced Catamarans, was talking about modules, how they can invariably be so heavy because they're laid up from solid fiberglass and uh, and that's very pertinent and the only real way to cut weight out of these boats is to use foam core so i've decided to use a blend of both of the technologies i've used solid glass as well as foam instead of using a chopper gun to just spray over the mold and and lay it up you know half a centimeter thick i've chosen to use ultra light um, materials. And in fact, uh, woven rovings uh, weren't in the factoring in this. I use a, what they call a Seatex brand, which is uh, this, this particular glass that has a very, very fine weave. If you ever look at the way the weave is there, there's not a lot of area in there for resin to build up, unlike a woven roving that tends to have a lot of gaps because you've got two uh, heavy weaves sort of interlacing like that and you've got a lot of gaps and bridges and that's where the resin tends to fill that creates a lot of weight now in a chopper gun instance you're spraying on uh, chopped fiber like this and a lot of these boats simply are just made with chopper guns 
And that does add a hell of a lot of weight. You're probably going to double, if not even add more than that uh, to the weight of a module like this. This module here so far is two layers of 300 CSM and a layer of 600 double bias, reinforced around the corners of the stairs and everything. And then I've put in a 20 mil foam core uh, core under the stair treads where they're going to be copying a lot of oomph and then now comes the time I'm going to be adding another layer of 300 to tie to that foam with uh, this is polyester by the way and then a layer of 600 and then another layer of 300 just to finish it off and what that also will do is provide an incredible amount of strength in the bottoms and the tops of the risers where the pressure is going to be on these stairs. Once I've finished doing these five or six panels that I have here, one, two, three, four, five, there is five stair risers. I'm then gonna go back and start to reinforce all the corners of these modules, just so that all that load is, uh, is is taken up with the reinforcement rather than the actual module tensioning and stretching. Now it's actually sitting down on a solid base down in the port side there, this particular module, but it is very, very big. This is a 10 foot high, 12 foot long um, you know, module and, and I'm never gonna make it ultra light. The better way would have been to build the whole thing out of foam and then fair and paint it. But I had the module, I'm using it. I love the module. I actually love the fact that I can lift it in and out and I don't have all that fairing at the end. The white's already done, all the hard work's done. I've just got to reinforce it. So I'm gonna get onto that now. Basically do each of these smaller pads with 300, 600 double bias, not allowed 300, and then peel apply it, and that way I've ultimately got my structure, a couple of strengthening uh, sections all over the module where I think it needs it, then I put it in. And in the worst cases, I feel there's still a bit too much flex, I can add a couple of other strips, but I'm not gonna do the big faces of the walls and everything in it. They're pretty much as they need to be, um, as strong as they need to be, because they will flex and, uh, and move with the boat in any case. Now that these have uh, been put in place, now remembering I clamped them, taped them, I did a whole heap of other things to get it nice and firm in there. They're rock solid. In fact, I could probably just leave it like that, but to tie the glass on there is obviously gonna add a little bit of weight, but make them incredibly strong, just like I did with the companion weight in the starboard side. The preparation, however, has taken some time. There's been a lot of hand sanding in these areas here. I now have a perfect radius here where I'll be able to lay the glass down with no air bubbles. I'm gonna get it on. It won't take me long to do each step, but I've got a few, uh, probably a day's work to get all these done, and then I'm gonna get onto these, and this module's gonna be done. Cannot wait to have it finished. Um, the other thing that was very important too, because I've got this module laying on its side, I had it actually vertical, so that these faces were vertical. I've, I've tilted it back. Now, I had to actually ensure that I didn't have a twist in it when I put it in, because once these are glassed in, there's not gonna be a lot of movement left. See the size of the excess that I'm putting on here. What I'm trying to do here is to um, kill two birds with one stone. By putting a large excess on there, I'm actually doing half of the laminating for the reinforcing that I intend to do later on. So better off to do it while you've got everything wet, wet on wet, keep things going. But by increasing the size of this from say, what you'd normally do is maybe 50 mil, to 100 mil, I've now increased the reinforcement in that stair riser as well as the tread itself. So this is a 600 double bias and it's orientated 45-45 um, so that when you step on it, it spreads the load. A straight or a lineal or a uni or a biaxial will have 90 and zero, possibly not quite as good in the reinforcement. When
So this is the third layer. The third, uh, this is a 300 CSM, this is the final layer. I've already finished these two. Still got this one and this one to go. Third layer, get it consolidated down, put some peel ply on it, it'll be nice and smooth, just like this one. No sanding, love it. What's going on here, John? What are you Look watching? At these dickheads. <laughs> I've never seen such foolish stuff in my life. Ah, uh, the world, the world. What is finished. it? What is it, John? A frozen strawberry. John, oh, you're joking. I've just enlightened John to ASMR eating. Look, it's the same colour as the lips. Oh, no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> the world finished. The world's over. John stood there with his mouth wide open for about five minutes when he saw the first ASMR. The How fingernail they, tapping just did him in. How do these people think of it? <laughs> I think I'm a newer for brain. Oh, that's classic. I love it. That is now done. That took me uh, a day and a half, or probably, a, oh, I don't know, probably about six or seven hours of salt laminating to get those stairs done because I've done them with uh, a layer 300, 600 double blocks, not like 300, which is more than enough for what I'm trying to achieve here. Probably could have got away with just 600 double blocks, but those 300 top matting layers give a really superior bond in the surface area and uh, to both the double bias and the foam. Uh, so I'm sort of working on the principle that the more surface area I can get, the better. But I'm gonna rip off the peel ply and, uh, and finish the up now, I'm getting the light sound all basically ready to install down here. Now the next part I have to do is I have to reinforce all of these little sharper edges. That's gonna be quite a bit of laminating, quite a little bit of almost like tabbing. It's one of those things that you just never finish until you finish it. So the best way to do it is just to get in and get it done. So I've tried to work on the principle of keeping the weight down and not adding just tons and tons of glass. So again, having this foam has eliminated the ability or the, the need for a really thick layer of solid glass. And what I've done around these corners here, which is still hot, uh, I've actually added some strips around about 150 mil wide of 1200 quadraxial. So not, it's like a double layer of 600 double bias, but you're actually getting the benefit of 90, zero, 45, 45 degrees of, uh, of, of structure all around the base here so that everywhere where I think it needs reinforcing, this module is going to get it. So over here, again, I'm going to go around here, do all of the base, and then I'm going to start working upwards, up along the stair treads, along here and here, and then up in anywhere where I think it needs reinforcing so that I'm adding strength where I need it and not where I don't. You've got to remember that under here, down here in this section here, that's actually going to be a door. So all this area here where this black line is, is going to be cut out and then that's going to be laminated to a floor which is already 20 mil thick. No point in reinforcing that. Same deal over here. Very important that I don't add weight where I don't need it and don't waste resin where I don't need it. I've got to trim the flange off the head module so I'm going to get in and cut that right now. And while I'm uh, at it, Due to the fact that it's late in the afternoon and everyone's gone, that little oscillating tool I've got, like it's the best tool for cutting fiberglass because I get minimal dust, but it's a noisy bastard. And everyone around here, I mean, no one can work when I'm actually cutting this stuff. So I'm better off to wait a few hours, let everybody leave, wait till five, six at night. It's almost dark here. So I'm basically gonna get it done. What I'm now gonna do, I've got to trim the 
the uh, flange off that uh, that head module so that I can get that holster companionway module to move about an inch to the bow and that'll get that fitted perfectly and now that I've reinforced all of this with extra reinforcement obviously I put some 1200 quarter in the bottom I'm going to cut out this floor section a little bit larger uh, smaller than the actual black line just to make sure that I get a really good bond down to the floor. That means it'll be less weight when I'm lifting it in, but I'll also be able to see if it's mating with the floor perfectly as well. So there's a whole lot of reasons why I need to cut this out. It's all coming back to me like a bad memory as I arrived this morning. I had a big night in here last night, um, cutting these modules, cutting the floors out of these modules, and you know, invariably when I come in, there's an hour of cleanup if I've had to leave in a hurry. As we all know, I like to clean up before I go home, but didn't last night. Uh, it got a bit late and it got a bit cold. I mean, it was about two degrees here last night. So Now these floors here are going to be tabbed down to the actual sole down there where that stool's sitting down there and on the other side so um, it needed to be done and I was really glad to be able to do it when no one else was here. They're done. I'm going to have to spend a bit of time cleaning up because there's a bit of dust on the floor here. I don't like having dust in my environment when I'm walking around, especially when I haven't got a mask on. I don't want to be breathing that stuff in. I am just loving winter. It's cold and I can work like a freaking beast in this sort of temperature. So I've finished sanding everything under the stairs there. Now this has all been reinforced with another two layers of, uh, of, tw of 600 and where possible I've done 1200 quad just to save a bit of time. But uh, I can't take myself seriously in this toque. I'd rather be cold and look good for you guys. Um, so everything's been reinforced, the foam's all done, everything under the stairs has all been sanded smooth so that I don't have to, uh, once I upright this thing, I'm going to basically have trouble getting to it to sand. I'm trying to get things sort of semi-complete so that it's ready to glass in. Or I have a lot to be done before I can actually put it down in a hole, but I'm certainly uh, getting closer and closer every day. Um, there's no one around, I've got people are very busy today uh, here, it's like crazy outside there, the, the mechanics are flat out. Johnny, God knows where, he's probably sitting at home uh, watching the motorbike races or something. But I'm going to lower this down, try to stand it up on my own, uh, wish me luck. Wouldn't be the first time I've uh, had to do stuff on my own. <laughs> oh, these are just so good. They're nice and solid. I'm really, really, really pleased with how this has come up. Um, I've got a little bit more sanding to do here before I can physically upright it. You can see what I mean. Once I put it upright, sanding underneath and pushing upwards is going to be just not happening for me. Um, but yeah, it's looking pretty good and uh, incredibly strong and stiff now. So I was all set to stand this module up and work on these um, uprights here and reinforce them. But what I decided to do was leave it laying down because I've got a better surface to work on and do this one here and even perhaps this one here. I've already done up to here, but all I need to do is strip reinforce because this most of this gets cut out to make a cupboard or a pantry in the side of it. Um, similarly on that backside down there that actually becomes a wardrobe or the reinforcement for the door so i can do that vertically but certainly i'm going to work on the horizontal or the these flatter surfaces however i can um, probably put one in here 
as well, just to beef it up. Now that's already about that thick, so it probably doesn't need any more reinforcement, but certainly in here, just wanna make sure that I'm dealing with uh, you know strength for the cabinetry and uh, and that going forward. But yeah, while I've got it in the horizontal plane, I'm just gonna work on it, wax some peel plant, and I can still stand it up once I'm finished. Just uh, a lot easier than working when the thing's vertical. It saves a lot of mess. I've just finished uh, the total reinforcement of this module. I've done all of these uprights and pretty much everywhere I think it needs it. John's just come over, uh, my highest paid employee. <laughs> John's arrived on the scene right at the right time. Um, I've still got some bits going off in on the other side there, but we're gonna whack it in place so that it actually cures in place so that I know that it's held its shape. In place as it needs to That's not in the way? No. No? Just need to slide it in. Just hold it there, you got it? Right out. You hold it? Alright, good. Alright, hang on. Just hold it there. Gotta move the camera, very important. <laughs> I'll just leave him there in suspense. You alright, mate? I'm hanging here, I'll mate. Just stand here and watch you for five minutes. Alright, yeah. <laughs> right, let me get down here. And we're gonna lower it down. Try not to try not to angle it, try to keep it upright, mate. Alright? Now's the Oh, mate, it feels so simple. Oh, you want that drop?